In Dune, inhabitants of the desert planet wear full body outfits called still suits. The still suit is the ultimate survival suit. The suit captures moisture and recycles it into drinking water. It is the thing that allows them to live and survive in this very arid climate where water is more valuable than oil, than gold. Jacqueline West and Bob Morgan made close to 200 suits for the new movie. Let's break down how the still suits were made and what parallels exist to NASA's space tech. We are recycling human waste on the International Space Station today. We recycle urine, we recycle the humidity, you know, your sweat. Let's suit up for the science and design of Dune's still suits. Still suit is a high efficiency filtration system. Even this early in the morning, you wouldn't survive two hours without one of these. On Arrakis, where most of Dune takes place, the environment has become so harsh that a human being cannot survive without being able to hang on to all of your bodily fluids. The design team wanted to be as faithful as possible to the groundbreaking 1965 novel that the film is based on. We were all such big fans of the book. It goes into so much descriptive discussions about each element of the still suit, the nose ring, the tubing, the water catch pockets. The still suit for Frank Herbert was a distillery and it took your human wastewater and by a pumping system that starts from the heel of the foot, keeps the distillery running. In good working order, your suit won't lose more than a thimble full of water a day. Interestingly, the designers drew inspiration not from the space age, but from the Middle Ages. Our inspirations were medieval knights. Even the armor, you can see it's it replicas of some of the Templar armor. If you look at pictures of the medieval knights, everything is jointed. Everything is flexible for fighting. Once they gathered inspiration and commissioned sketches, it was time to build a prototype. So they turned to the artist who made suits for the original Batman movies. And Jose Fernandez, he's actually done some work with NASA developing new suits and new helmets. So he built the first <laughs> prototype for us. We actually watched all the pieces be cut mm -hmm. on the table and talked about, does this look like it would really work? We called our still suit a micro sandwich because we wanted the different layers to be mm -hmm. visual. So netting uh, over a cotton fabric, over a, a wicking fabric, like an Under Armour type of thing that breathes and wicks water and takes it away from your body like what they use for the football players today on the field. We used very flexible materials, mm -hmm. even for the hard pieces. We knew that our actors were really gonna wear these in those conditions in the desert and their bodies would have to breathe. So as a result, all suits needed to be custom made using molds of each actor's body. It's basically three pieces. It was designed in a way that was functional and easy to put on and off and, and allowed us to keep them cool in a very natural way. Everything on it conceptually would function. But were they functional on set? No, they really had to get out of their still suits <laughs> to go to the bathroom. Okay, so although the costumes didn't actually recycle an actor's waste, would a real still suit be possible someday? Let's examine how water recycling works in space. On the space station, they have a saying that yesterday's urine is tomorrow's coffee. When the crew member goes to the bathroom, we collect urine separately, sort of in an air funnel. It goes into the funnel and we add some chemicals to prevent it from breaking down and making ammonia and other gases. So the crew members, when they exercise and sweat a lot, that all goes into the air. And we're able to remove that humidity from the air and put that into the water processor along with the water from the urine processor. About 50% of the crew members' water comes from urine and about 50% comes from sweat, perspiration. The space station acts like one big still suit, but while on Dune... Your body's movements provide the power. On the ISS, machinery powered by solar energy is needed. We have you know, electric pumps, electric heaters. We have a rotary separator that spins it, so all the urine goes to the outside. We collect that, we add heat, and the water boils off at a low temperature, and then we condense that water, clean it up farther, and then we heat it up to sort of oxidize or remove additional chemicals, and then we add some iodine, similar to you might add when you're camping to your water system, and then it's fit to drink for the astronauts and make their coffee. Hmm, sounds efficient. 
And with the brand new system recently installed on the ISS, nearly 98% of astronauts' water will soon be recycled. That seems on par with the Dune still suit, but why is a real still suit powered by our own bodies still science fiction? You could certainly capture energy from body movement. You may be possible to do some of it. You do the, the water recovery. To recycle human waste requires a lot of energy, and that's typically more energy than a human body can provide. But if you took in 2,500 calories per day, you can't generate 2,500 calories of work because the body is only about 25% efficient. I don't think it's thermodynamically possible to do what they're, they're doing in the suits. The still suits in Dune provide a concept of surviving an uninhabitable desert planet. With all science fiction, you know, they're pushing the envelope of what's possible. Part of the, the imagination and, and thrill of space travel is trying to make some of those things that are science fiction, what portions of them can we make real? <laughs> when people do go to Mars, they'll probably wear something very close to the still suits. This book was so prophetic. I think in LA next year, we're gonna see a lot of still suits. <laughs>